Now, for the moment, we have only talked about the geometry of the calculation model. To make it a fully pledged calculation model, we also need to add several calculation properties. The geometrical properties are linked to the native Revit analytical model and its properties, while calculation properties will be defined via the Sophistic Structural Property menu. This menu can be opened from the Sophistic Analysis menu under User Interface. Some of these properties are not specific to the type of element. Each member will have a number which will be used for outputs and exports. Objects can be assigned to group, which allows for further management, especially if the model is later used in Sophistic FEA. A name can be provided for a better reference and understanding in reports that will no longer be within the graphical 3D model. Since we are working with finite element technology, meshing parameters are available for all analytical members. If new input is made, the general meshing options will be used. For linear elements, which means beams and columns, additional properties must be set. By default, the type of rigidity is set by the type of structural object that was used. Another topic is the position of the cross-section with regards to the analytical line. If centered, it will be aligned on the center of gravity of the cross-section. So the finite element might be a bit different than the physical one. But all effects will be straightforward. If you want to use a T-beam profile, while the physical beam is only a rectangle beam profile, you can set a participating width of the slab, which will be accounted in the efforts. Finally, you can also define releases at both ends of the line, as well as it to its adjacent members. For surface elements, such as walls and slabs, we have different properties. Surface elements can be defined with a varying thickness. In that case, you can override the geometry and set the thickness yourself for each edge of the element. An additional window will then pop up to allow the setting for each edge, while the corresponding edge will be highlighted in the model. Sophistic will automatically create a calculation model with such variation. Like for beams, you can set the type of stiffness. For instance, if an object is supposed to be only considered as a diaphragm, hence without bending stiffness. Finally, we can also set releases for each edge of the element. An additional window will then pop up to allow the setting for each edge while the corresponding edge will be highlighted in the model. Regarding edge releases, often there are a big number of edges with a similar situation and therefore a similar edge property. With the command edge release, you can visualize the status of all edges with a color scheme, each color corresponding to a type of release. To modify the properties of several edges, Use the command edge release and select all the wall or slab edges that you want to modify uniformly. The dialog will then allow you to set these release properties and repeat the process for other edges. Now that you have defined properties for all the elements, we also want to use some general properties which are already contained in the Revit file. Sophistic will therefore create the corresponding calculation information and then we will check or adjust them. This whole process is called mapping. For the materials, the software will look at the Revit materials that are used in the model and look at both at their name and their properties. Out of this information, the software will create a corresponding sophistic material. You can then adjust this match from the list of created materials, or you can modify the existing material. A dialog will open to allow access to all the physical and resistant properties available. 
If needed, you can also create a new material from scratch and then match it to the rivet material. In a similar fashion than with materials, we now look at cross-sections. Sophistic will therefore analyze the Revit elements and associate a Sophistic section to it. As much as possible, Sophistic will try to find a standard section type that matches the Revit element. Otherwise, Sophistic will create a polygonal cross-section with the same geometry. Like for materials, you can adjust the matchmaking yourself or modify the properties of the Sophistic section. A dialog will open to allow geometrical adjustments or the specification of reinforcements. If needed, you can also create a new cross-section out of Sophistic catalog of standard profiles. Finally, we take a look at loads. As mentioned earlier, load cases in Revit are sorted under the type called load nature. We therefore map the Revit load nature to Sophistic actions the software will base itself on the name of the load nature to find a corresponding action type. Properties and additional actions are set in the Sophistic Action Manager. They mostly allow to set all the combination rules and factors. If an action is missing from your project, add a new action via the catalog of actions related to the project's norm. Once all these definitions have been made, we have to make sure that everything is coherent and that we haven't forgotten any step. With the command check, you can verify the consistency of the properties or the geometrical irregularities. The software would then scan the model and list the potential errors or warnings. You can then visualize and isolate the corresponding elements to then proceed with any modification. Obviously, we get a warning for our project, since no boundary condition has yet been defined. These can be created via the Revit Analysis menu, under the command Boundary Condition. In the corresponding Revit Properties menu, you can then set the details conditions for each degree of freedom. A particular pitfall is by Foundation Objects. These do not automatically generate a boundary condition. This is actually good, as you might prefer to choose which type of support condition should represent the foundation. So don't forget to define supports at all your foundation objects. Now that our system contains support conditions, we might want to check that it is stable before even considering performing any type of analysis. For this, we again use the command check, but this time we look at the kinematic stability option. Again, the software will then list any object which is unstable. Be careful, stability does not mean that you have correctly defined the supports of your project. So use both consistency and stability check and also have a manual overview of your project as the software cannot do all the work for you. With a stable model, we can now think about defining loads. In the Revit menu Analyze, two functions are required. First, we need to define all the load cases which we will use. In the command Load Cases, we can create new load cases with a name, a number and a load nature. Once this is done, we can now create the load objects with the command Loads and choose the specific type of loading we want to use. In the corresponding Revit properties, we can now specify the loading value and assign this load to one of the load cases created previously. For the self-weight of the structure, we only need to create a load case, but do not create loads explicitly. The self-weight loads will be created automatically when performing the analysis. Since we are modeling a lot of loads and load cases, it is important to check whether these definitions are correct. For that, we can go in the Utilities toolset and in the menu Loads, choose the command Filter Loads. This will open a menu 
which will limit the display of loads elements according to their load and their type. It is possible to visualize several load cases at the same time by holding the control key on your keyboard while selecting items. You can also keep a filtered view as your working view for easier modeling or adjustments. To return to a normal view, simply use the command again and deactivate the selection. It can also be interesting to calculate a load combination in order to directly get results for such combinations. In the menu Loads, choose the command Load Combination to open the dialog. Click on the icon to create a new combination by selecting the type ULS, SLS, then the desired load cases and defining their combination factor. By default, the software will use the unfavorable value. Please note that you do not need to create combinations for the design of concrete members. This will be done automatically during the design process. So only create here the combinations that you want to document or check explicitly.